So thank you very much <laughs> for being here tonight uh, of the exhibition um, of the work in progress organized by Carriatid uh, at the Galerie d'Architecture in Paris. Um, we're very happy to host the team of women writing architecture with us tonight. Eva and I, I'm Claudia Mewen, I didn't mention before. Eva and I have been working with Emily. And um, yes. please. <laughs> um, so I'm Eva, I'm, I'm working with Claudia on the imprint since November. And that was actually also the, the starting point of our collaboration with the women in architecture. And um, I dived into the archive of Cora Ventani and Stella Kids to gather all the texts, texts and articles uh, written by women. And um, I made a list of it. And that was a little bit of the, the starting point where we wanted to work with. And um, you can find that list also on the website of the architecture. Yeah. And yeah. from there on, we wanted to make a kind of Great. Um, so thank you, Gladia, for inviting, and we are really happy to bring um, a little bit of uh, women writing architecture in Paris, but also super curious to hear how the project is received here. And um, so it's really intimate. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it was also really spontaneously uh, organized, also inviting you, Stephanie. Uh, and we actually don't know each other. It's the first time we meet. And that's why we thought maybe in, in the first part of the evening, we could just do a small round uh, table to explain who we are. Uh, and also, Ellen, but also we thought we could do that in a way that. Um, like everyone could explain a little bit uh, relationship to books in a general uh, way and um, maybe through through work or like research uh, we do. And um, maybe I can start um, just introducing myself. So I'm working, I'm Emily Aperse, working um, together with uh, Hilary Thomas here on the screen. Uh, and Barbara, mm -hmm. who started Women Writing Architecture uh, in October 2020. Uh, she started with the idea. I would explain then, I would go through the website uh, like quickly to explain the structure, how it works, and then we can have um, an, another open conversation. But that's the idea of uh, this kind of working session. Uh, but so, uh, Helen is also part of Women Writing Architecture. Uh, she started it and, um, and I was, John was uh, by Barbara Tuller um, in February, who is also work working with me at the chair of uh, Adam Caruso at the uh, ETH Zurich, so the, the architect architecture school uh, in Zurich. And we are teaching together with Adam Caruso, who's also here. Uh, I mean, we are teaching in his chair um, design projects. Um, and uh, yeah, and I, I guess for me and Barbara, the relationship we have with text and writing intensified a lot with uh, the, the teaching because uh, since two years we start to, um, to really use the, the text uh, uh, with the students and we have reading circles um, like every week. We have a reader that we uh, um, organize at the beginning of the semester with a wide um, and really diverse range of text we put together and the texts don't have like um, sometimes that they are not related like directly with the theme of the semester but they frame uh, the semester and this is really we have been I mean uh, Barbara can complete uh, but I think this is really a lot of uh, discoveries for us how um, it's like a moment with the students where it's really free and uh, and this is um, we learn so much from that and it, this is like really framing the, the semester and building a, a wider like a bigger research over uh, the semester so that's really like I think for me and also through not the website it's really something um, like that I'm learning a lot from and I think everyone in the studio learns a lot and the students uh, also and 
maybe I don't know, Barbara, you want to add something to that? And you also, maybe what I didn't say, it's like we also um, independent architects ne uh, next to that, which is quite important to say. It's not uh, what we're doing. And maybe you want to also uh, say something uh, mm -hmm. yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so, hi, I'm Barbara Thuler. Uh, as well, part of the team of uh, Women Writing Architecture, as Emily just said. And yeah, I mean, I can really add to that what you just said. And um, for me as well, the relationship to text and books clearly developed over the last two years while teaching and as well now through Women Writing Architecture, of course. Um, and I have to say, it's really as well something that I have been looking for and I really enjoy and value a lot to have this possibility to have this balance of having my own practice and the possibility to have this closer and uh, more intense confrontation with text and yeah for me this is very important actually and I really think one really um, adds to the other and influences the other um, yeah and I think through the work at the chair uh, with text and as well through the work at women writing architecture it's opened up for me as well, much more potential in the uses um, of text in, in this field we're working. And as you talked already a bit about this um, performances we're doing in these reading circles with the students, um, uh, like using this artistic performances in a methodological um, approach in teaching opens up really um, a different and open way of talking about texts um, as as well the body space and other senses are um, as well included and give like another layer of talking about about texts and and books um, yeah which I found really um, yeah was really um, taking it for me to into another world or to another level. <laughs> and uh, maybe also from the, and still on the woman writing architecture side, Ellen, do you want to, to complete on that? I mean, it's, a, it's a, I know it's an idea you have since a really long time uh, and it's, it probably crystallized and challenges uh, a lot of things. Uh, you have been probably thinking about books and uh, yeah, maybe can you say something else like about your relationship to, to writings and books now and also maybe because a lot of people ask me all the time what you are doing <laughs> next to that and <laughs> ah, it's a secret no um, I guess how to I mean although I am an architect by by training <clears throat> I guess how to everybody I'm the one who's most connected to books um producing them writing them editing them um <clears throat> and I'm really interested in um experimental forms of publication as well so I mean I've worked with archives worked at the VNA and the RIBA and um, I currently work with um, a group called Drawing Matter <clears throat> which is a private collection of drawings in uh, Somerset in England um, so this idea of using of the virtual environment in order to create conversations around objects and collections is something that I'm very familiar with um, and then also I've, I've worked at Fiden, so I've made books and I've, I've uh, spent time in the process of making books. So, yeah, I have a very, very strong connection, I think quite different to Barbara and Emily's, um, which is great. I think it's good to have a synergy of different perspectives in the project, which I'm sure you find too, Claudia, um, with your team. Um, bringing different points of view um, into your work and then and that's very much what uh, women writing architecture is about the encouraging and the making of a space for different voices that may not necessarily agree with it, agree with each other to come together and to make a whole thing um, so what am I doing alongside well one of the things is a, a, a translation project I'm working on the um, the second architecture biennale, which was about the architecture in Islamic countries, which is really not known. Um, but I said, but uh, the next project for that, which is kind of inspired by um, the by women writing architecture, I hope we have an Instagram account, and I put up um, uh, a post about Marina Weissman, who's um, uh, 
that she's dead now, but she was a, an important um, arch um, architectural theorist and historian from Argentina. And that, and I put up a little post about her and then some people were questioning like, where can I read her writing? So I said, um, you know, this sounds really interesting. She's speaking from the, um, the non-Western uh, perspective about critical regionalism. So, you know, so the Women Writing Architecture Forum made a, a highlighted the need, you know, the possibility of um, uh, uncovering more about her work. So that that to me is a kind of usefulness of, of this, this project. Um, I do I have various collaborations with different people. One of them is with <clears throat> Emily and Barbara on women writing architecture, but also I collaborate with some other women in um, Belgium and Holland. Um, we're, we're doing a, um, a couple of conf we've done a couple of conferences together around the practice of architecture <clears throat> and its relationship to research, which again connects very strongly to what women writing architecture is doing. So yeah, I hope does that give you a little bit of insight into the secrets? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I, I think like but. Um, maybe, um, uh, Stephanie, you could uh, uh, explain a bit what you had. We were, I mean, you were one of the first um, to contribute, but we're not of the first, but like you were before the, the website was launched in June, and we were uh, before that collecting a, a lot of citations, and you were one of the first contributors. And that's why we had uh, this idea of we were thinking, oh, we, we have an event in Paris, like who should we ask? And we went through a list and uh, we found you uh, again and um, um, yeah like um, we were really curious to also invite you tonight because um, I mean from what we know from what we found on the internet about your work uh, it feels that there are so many overlaps with uh, what we're doing in the questions you are um, or like you were formulating and I saw this a small description uh, of your work on the Malake website where it's, um, you define, I think it was, you define architecture as a political device um, for uh, um, people. And then there was this uh, particular sentence um, that you really uh, want to engage much with uh, redefining architectural canon. And so maybe you can say, yeah, you can say something like to, that we frame because you, you have been working on the like your first uh, thesis was about the uh, I, I don't know exactly what you are doing now, but also like how um, like books are already like uh, if you all, if you challenge that, uh, I mean, this this redefining the canon, if you challenge it already uh, through books and... Sure, sure. So, hi everyone, <laughs> I'm Stéphanie Dadour. I'm a professor at the School of Architecture of Paris Malaké, and I'm a researcher in the Laboratoire ACS from the school. So, as uh, Emily was saying, indeed, um, I'm... Well, I came to books in an unexpected way because I was doing my thesis on uh, North American housing projects in the, in the 90s and 80s, but they were not really very interesting projects except the very canonic ones. So Eisenman, the postmodern or the, the avant neo-avant-garde of American architects until one day I discover in the library at Columbia University a whole bunch of books written by uh, feminist architects, books I've never heard about during all my formation in design and architecture. So I was very uh, curious about all those books like The Sex of Architecture, Sexuality and Space, Dolores Hayden's books, Alice Friedman's books, and I was very uh, uh, curious to read about this. So my thesis changed and became not about North American projects that were built, but there, that were uh, criticized and, um, and all the writing around uh, the private sphere. So this was part of my life, let's say 10 years ago. And because today the, the feminist topic, uh, because of Me Too and many other political things in France became uh, a new subject in architecture schools and students are really willing to have courses about this. I've been extending my researches and my, uh, and my uh, enseignement, my, my class.
classes about this. Maybe I will just give you an example of a course I'm giving right now that is quite interesting uh, in an architecture school. So it's a, an optional course where I invite students from second year and third year to read. So we spent one hour in class reading, which is already something. You know? <laughs> so we have the text on paper. I, 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 I print everything on paper. And for next year, I'm going to ask uh, to have couches in the class because now we read on very uh, uncomfortable chairs and tables. Mm -hmm. And so we read for one hour two texts, one that is written by a feminist scholar outside from architecture, and then and another one that is written by an architect, but that has nothing to do basically uh, with feminism. And so students have to read those two texts, but there are two students in class that had to work on these two texts. And uh, they, the question I asked them is, let's say, uh, Sarah Ahmed, which is a feminist scholar, and Yasmin Lahri, which is a Pakistani architect, meet. They meet on a plane, let's say, whatever, in a restaurant, in a cafe, on a plane. What do they tell each other? So the students have to really go into the text to understand what is the theoretical framework, and also what an architect and a non-architect can say to each other regard from the two texts they have been reading. And then they have to perform it in class. So let's say we do it, you're Yasmin Lahi and I'm Sarah Ahmed, and we have to dialogue, to discuss. So it can be a, a very informal discussion. They have to imagine the setting. It can be a blog, it can be a podcast, it can be whatever they imagine, and they play it in front of everyone. So they perform actually what is uh, saying in the text. And this displacement from text to performance, which is something we never do really in architecture, to use our body, to use the setting around to say something, is very perturbing, perturbing I don't know, <laughs> for students. But in a way, uh, because, it's, uh, because no one is in theater in our class, there is something very funny about doing it. Very, very, let's say, uh, the, the students played the game, actually, which is something I was not very much expecting. So they went into this doing it, and the text became something else. And this is what, this is the whole, the whole idea. And after it's challenging architecture, because Yasmin Lahi, for example, has to respond to the scholar. So it has to do something to architecture. And then we debate about the whole thing. So it's a three hour class, one hour for reading, one hour performing, and one hour debating. So this is my new, uh, let's say my new uh, research around what can, what can texts to do to architecture yeah. or actually to architecture thinking. But I think that's interesting because this is one of um, the question we have, and I don't know if I, because we started to speak about it before with um, with Claudia also like the, because the maybe I, I will go through really quickly uh, from the website. You know uh, the website, sure. but maybe I can I can go quickly through and um, maybe just the one big question we had with um, in our last advisory board uh, or like that's a word that came out like what is this uh, website about and uh, the words agent came out out of it and um, because we are listing the books on it and um, it's it's um, is it about like the whole activity uh, the whole talking we are doing around this website or is it about a connection so there is a connection there but maybe I can quickly go uh, through the the I will do it really quickly because we are taken by the time. Or oh, Elaine, do you want to add something or like uh, react to something or Barbara? Yeah, I, do, I want to say uh, that was so interesting, Stephanie. It's great to really <clears throat> digitally meet you <laughs> slightly. It sounds fascinating, your, your idea of setting up uh, these conversations, the dialogue. Um, I think that's, um, yeah, it's a really important thing that to set up a dialogue between two completely different points of view in a way um it, it must be totally i mean are you working within um a history and theory context or are you working within a design context 
uh, actually both are not separated mm -hmm. because in, uh, in French architecture school you have uh, what we call uh, disciplinaire. Mm -hmm. So in architecture schools in France you have the project, but then you have history classes, sociology, uh, humans, humanities, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and I'm one of those professors that is um, in between all of this. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, I'm not really cat in a category. I'm, I see myself. That sounds so ideal. <laughs> well, yeah, it's not easy. It's something uh, you have to work on <laughs> because you're uh, very quickly put in a category. But I try to uh, go from one to another. So when I started being a professor in France, I was in the in the history uh, discipline. Now I'm in humanities and uh -huh. culture. So this movement is not always well seen, but uh, this is what I I know to do. So this is. What really fascinating when you describe the French context and that, that's something that we're noticing as we try and reach to different different countries and different places with that with our project is the is that you may have the same intention but the but the way of doing things is very very different and I think that's proving to be very interesting um the dialogues bet between um different in different different places and how I mean you talk um about the canon I mean <clears throat> you know in a way that's very much our starting point an idea of um dis dismantling the canon or challenging it or reconstructing it or but um you know and um but then you think well actually in, in different countries the idea of the canon is completely different and you know, I think that's, you know, I mean, even um, having your conversation between Yasmin Larry from Pakistan and Sarah Ahmed, who's based in uh, Britain, you know, that, that's an interest. Just the fact that they're talking from such different places is extremely interesting. The, the, the title of the class is Decentering, uh, Decentering Thinking for, uh, I can't remember the rest, but the idea of decentering the, mm. the perspective is the main idea of the class. Yeah. Because I hope you will. I hope you'll consider putting it onto our site because I think it'd be a very interesting counterpart to um, the the work that uh, Barbara and Emily are doing with the students in their reading circle. Absolutely, be, I think that would be fascinating. Yeah. Sure, we can do this. Great. A little, a, a little question: um, Have you had the chance to understand if your class? What kind of impact has your class to yeah. the design studio, for example? It's the first, because... yeah, it's the first thing, it's the first year I'm giving this class. Okay. But I asked the students at the end of the of the class to read to write down uh, in an anonymous anonymous way uh, whatever they wanted to, yeah. to ask. And, and it's a class where the students decide of their own grades. This was very important for me because it was a way of encouraging them also to read. Yeah. So you put whatever grade you think is. If you want an A, you will have your A, don't worry. <laughs> so <laughs> this was done. Um, and beside this, the ev evaluation was quite interesting because uh, they came up with the very important stuff. First, that they don't know how to read. So I have to now to really give them a class on how to read the text and how to extract it. I thought I did it, but not yeah. enough. And uh, how to debate it. Yeah. Because they have a lot of thinking, but they don't know how to build up a critical uh, aspect of their thought. So yeah. we discuss in class, but it goes in all senses, uh, in all directions, I mean. And now the important thing is to start having um, a grid and to make them conscious of the grid they are using for the debate. So now it's a bit of my role of doing this, but their, their comment was very important for me because now I know what to do. Uh, besides this, they were very, very, very happy with the readings. First, I had a lot of women architects and they, they never heard of Yasmila, for example. Uh, 
So they were very happy to uh, to encounter those uh, those architects, but also the the intellectual uh, the scholars I I proposed for them, and they were very happy to have uh, a time to discuss yeah. without being evaluated, exactly. just to discuss, just to say whatever they wanted to say, but because discussion is always or about the project or or in front of a jury, but here we could discuss almost anything that has to do with the text. And it was so, I mean, it's so simple to discuss, mm -hmm. <laughs> but we never give the time to do it. So basically we have two hours of reading and discussing that are missing usually in architecture uh, formations. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so it's super interesting because I, I also teach, but in a design atelier mm -hmm. and I give books, but I don't have the time to really yeah. discuss. Yeah. With them, so I ask them if then uh, it's compulsory. I don't give notes, but I give a book to uh, everybody, or the same, so that the same book can be read by three or three, two, 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 yeah, three or four together, and then they can share thoughts. But they, I, I would love to have some money doing your, your class next week because, they, as you said, they feel the need, they love it when they do it, and they, they, they don't know how to do it. Yeah, but if if we just give a one hour, it's not a lot. Yeah, if we just spend we one do. hour reading one text a week mm -hmm. uh, or two texts a week, it's nothing in terms of time and schedule. But we have to do it in class. I don't ask them to do it at okay, home because yeah. they won't do it. Yeah, yeah. Super interesting yeah. as well. Yeah. So as well, thinking that you're doing that in the first year, and it would be super interesting to see as well how how um, it will influence them in their further education, having done that in the first year where you have this first contact as well with your studies and having this entry into it actually. And I feel as well, I mean, it, it has some parallels with our reading circles we're doing with our students. And I could imagine because as well, we always feel this performative work um, has a big impact as well on how you can then um, uh, present yourself as well, or how it somehow sometimes declicks a bit how you how you talk or how you debate, as you say as well. And maybe I mean to to make the link to women writing architecture. What I was uh, starting to explain before, or something that that came came up. It's like so the website is. Um, there is something about it which is uh, not about reading the text in it. It's like listing, it's like referencing uh, citations. And uh, you have this all, I mean, I can go through quickly through again, again that we speak about the same thing, but then we ask people to annotate um, the references they are giving to us. So there is a really, people give us like really specific stories they have, and specific relationship they have to the text. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really biographical and this is all listed and the website is about that and it's also we do collections that are um, also more curated um, uh, reading lists or like they are about uh, syllabus or they are um, about an event or they are and one collection we are doing now it's um, we go to for instance bookshops and we ask them to make a selection of books written by women and there sometimes and that's funny because a lot of bookshops are um, led by girls and sometimes it's really surprising what they are uh, proposing in, in to sell and this is super important because i mean it's interesting because uh, it has uh, a lot of in like what books they choose has impact on what we buy and what we read and just the fact to come to them and uh, ask them um, okay like can you do uh, this small collection this starts i mean it raises probably a certain awareness and there is something i mean maybe they do it differently next time uh, we don't know but there is something like activist almost into that. And also the fact that I don't know that we have like the discussions around the website. Um, actually, we, we thought it would uh, have been much more spontaneous how people would uh, engage with, with it and to write and, and so on. But 
actually like when we look at the list of contributors we have been speaking with almost all of them and there are these discussions that are um, um, quite important i mean really valuable to us but it's also um yeah, the, uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. Um, yeah, they are super valuable, and we are wondering if this is, um, yeah, like if this uh, the website is maybe, um, yeah, it's like for yeah, sorry. so for me it's really almost going into a campaign, like going like speaking, you know, even on the evening or like explaining people like ask me or what I'm doing, and I say woman writing architecture, and it feels really feminist at first sight, and um, but you have to explain it, and it takes time, and you have so it's like um, yeah, almost going into a campaign, but, but I don't I, I don't know if I'm like this is a discussion we had also with Helen, like we don't know, like we are probably feminists, but which kind of feminism mm -hmm. we don't know. We are also experimenting and the website it's like a place for a lot of different voices and but so there is something um we were wondering it's like what the website is about because there's something about it which is not so much about the text themselves but about maybe the fact to speak about them or like all the I things think that around and for me that is exterior to the project i think that the political statement of the project is to make visible what has been for a long time almost invisible yeah it, yeah I mean, when I when I tell you that I was doing my thesis in 2010 and I discovered those books written by women, it's it's weird that no one talked about them. When you look at syllabus from all university, even yours in Switzerland, at bibliographies, you will find always books written by men, whereas a lot of books have been written by women. So you're making visible those books, and this is the the I would say this is the first outcome of, uh, and this is why I I participated to this project because for me it was obvious that we needed to make them visible, and putting them all together make them visible. It gives a weight to the to their presence. And what I was uh, talking with Emily is that what is uh, I I was understanding you know, it took me a, a while to understand is this is done even um, uh, not depending on the quality of this text, which has a, a, um, a potential in itself. So just the fact to make them visible, it's, it's the, the statement and it's already that, because I was somehow expect, expecting the editorial uh, work because, because of my mm -hmm. background, I think, but I, it, it took me a while to understand that it's not about quality, it's not about safety. <clears throat> Well, it's a good book. Uh, it's more about. I just jump in there uh, because I, I mean, I think this issue of quality is absolutely fundamental. Because um, you know, where does where does the idea of quality come from? It's in itself quite a hegemonic idea, and the idea of that the value val a text gains value by being recommended by somebody, annotated by somebody, included in a in a collection, and that's actually something which makes the project quite complex in, in, in we can call it like the long spoons um, way of collecting uh, content so we get um, people write to us and they want to send us a list of their text to put on on the on, on the bibliography but it's not possible to put a text on to the bibliography without it being recommended by somebody in some way so quality we want to call it quality or value is accrued through being um, important to, to different kinds of people so you know I think for example a room of one's own has people has a uh, Maria Conan from Switzerland and then uh, somebody from India saying why it's important to them and to me that is actually like it but, gives a much more layered and dense idea of quality. And, to what, and this what is what will displace the canon. This is what you yeah. Because today the canon has some criteria of, uh, mm -hmm. of what exactly. is a valuable or good book or whatever. But by, by if you and you and you and you and you will talk about this book, this is how we can displace the canon from the subject, yeah. the, the situated point of view. But then you could eventually, I, I totally agree with you, you could eventually expect that you from women writing make this, because it's 
it's your of course your selection can, can be different from mine this is uh, something that i question myself now i understood that it's not about that but maybe a question is well you didn't have the chance to, to show the website but the question for me would be uh, what about the collection you're making are they connected to the because you could ask uh, stephanie to make her collection then there is a value a value or a selection that is made on her canon of uh, importance i don't know and they, they would be you know it's like um, can it's, we do I'm, something completely detached from this value topic or i don't know just... i mean the, the, we have i mean elena i don't know if you want to react on that but like the way we we do the collections we have different ways and um maybe for instance on bookshop we don't always get answers from mm -hmm. people and we started to look ourselves at um the, the, what they propose and just by doing that it's kind of making a survey of um what they propose and and you get into i don't know like you you start to understand maybe a, a more local um, so um, publishing culture yeah. or like and so that's one way we do because mm -hmm. we are kind of always experimenting yeah, when we right. don't get the, the the datas and but we always i mean we of course ask uh, i mean the the, the the collection are made more at the moment they are more from around the organizations or like a discussion uh, like a talk between people and but they are they are curated actually the collection is like one part of yeah. the website which is uh, quite great and it's, it's one way you can enter and discover books there are so many ways you yeah, can yeah. No, discover it's super interesting because it's it's really a mix between like an analytics uh, survey like you said and different ways uh, because i could be now it would be interesting to see the uh, yeah exactly example, yeah. because there is uh, differences that we, we can create uh, um, navigating yeah, yeah navigating is nice which i yeah. find super yeah and maybe we can <laughs> say also that that's uh, i mean we finished the first phase of the project and now we are uh, developing it uh, because we see the um they are graphically but not just graphically it's like how we have questions now like how the the, the community because the website is living from its community and growing from its community how it's represented and how it's hierarchies or like visible mm -hmm. on the website and how you can search and so on. this we are developing and fine-tuning so much but maybe something we want to develop, we can say it's, um, there is the possibility to do personal collection, the website, and this we would like, you, you can make your personal collection so by selecting um, citations and you can share it to students or you can yeah. share it to friends, but it's, this is something we want to develop even more that they become maybe more, we call that the Talmud uh, PDF. They become like uh, really uh, pieces, um, like PDF, where you can um, you can also export the annotations, but also even add maybe annotations on yourself, and maybe this can be saved somewhere on the website, um, so that it's becoming like a tool and Evolute, yeah, that team yeah. That So we we are really at the beginning of that. Uh, I don't know if you want to add something, Barbara or Ellen. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the yeah, it's it's a super interesting phase at the moment as well, and it's nice as well to have this talk right now. I think because we're really about like talking with people how the website is perceived and if the the things we would like how they work if they really work like this and people see them like this. And we had. Um, uh, quite some debates as well about uh, the goal of um, um, how can you have this community around it, how can this grow and how much does it always have to come from us approaching people or when can it become like a somehow like a mechanism that people mm -hmm. know that can, they can contribute and I think you should it, make an exhibition out of it, so so you really make it visible, <laughs> because because for example, students don't know. I mean, in France, huh? I don't know, but I talked about with my students about it, especially the ones that are really interesting, interested by women. They don't know about it, 
And I think in a place like this, you can really extract some fish, some panels, and really do an exhibition about it. So it becomes really visible. I mean, tangibly, material, material. Yeah. And this, uh, this is linked to whatever uh, the question that uh, we discussed with Amelie uh, today, because uh, by doing our selection, like the articles and books written by women in our archive, so we never work like this. We just sent out the call for papers or uh, invited people to write, but never thinking, okay, one man, one would never thought like this. So we were surprised to see all this content. And on the wall, later we will show you, it's, it's very important what we found out. And but then I was thinking, okay, now we have this collection, this Cosa Metallica is a collection in women writing uh, architecture website, super. But um, it's just a list at the moment, we don't have the content. So I was wondering, okay, but then how do we do? How can we make it interesting for somebody that doesn't? Because I, if I write, if we find, I don't know, something that is Claudio Mion wrote on blah blah blah. Nobody knows me. Maybe nobody knows even the topic that I was <laughs> writing about in 2010. I don't know, yeah, as a young uh, architect, but it's still interesting. So how, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> probably not, I don't know. But then how how can I get into it? I, I wouldn't need, uh, I don't know, you, <laughs> uh, uh, writing a note about this article I wrote to uh, tickle me and, and then say, okay, then, Either I buy the issue if it's still available, or if you don't have the content, how do we do to to see it, so not to access it? Yeah, I can I can share my screen. Yes. With you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but this is uh, those are the annotations we have. Um, yes, exactly. You need yes. this. Yeah. You need this annotation. But yeah, exactly. It's. Uh, but what you were saying, Claudia, um, I mean, there are also. Uh, I mean, even like the first, uh, because maybe also Stephanie doesn't know so much about your background, like how you started, because what, um, what's on the wall there, it's the archive of Cosa Mentale. Yeah. Maybe you can explain how you started yeah. quickly. I mean, now uh, the Cariatid is taking over the work that has been started uh, with Cosa Mentale in 2009. Why? Uh, why? Because we started as a, um, an association of young architects and students at, at the time that was like um, quite big. We were 10. Uh, I mean, you're in Cosa Mentale. I am. Ah, okay, okay, I, am okay. I am co founder. Okay, okay, and okay. then. Okay, I understand. Yeah, okay. and then, like, well, years pass by, uh, people are maybe still interested but not very involved in the project. And then I, I thought three years back that it was really a pity to let it die because we understood that we needed, we were asked for a level of uh, professionality that we didn't have because I, we are all architects, we were all working in offices and we didn't have the time to follow the, 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 pro, the editorial project as it was demanded there because our publication were started to be asked so in, in the even the, um, the, the the printing number was, was uh, not enough to understand so this required a, a, an organization that we didn't have at the time so i could see that it was going to i don't know mm -hmm. uh, maybe lower and then eventually die and uh, even if the, the interest by the, the the first team is still there it's not that it is not there it's just that the work that is required is more uh, yeah it, it needs to be more professional so i don't know three years back i did i i thought that i could uh, i mean i love books and i love the project that we built with my colleagues at the time and I proposed them, okay, let's uh, keep Cosa Mental as a collection. That means it's a project that we share all together. But then I have my own project that if I do that professionally, we grow uh, <laughs> like uh, spontaneously while doing this, uh, this as a job. So I said, okay, Cosa Mental will still ho uh, host um, the project that we share as an association, as a group of people. And I see this sort of a project. Um, 
how do you say, like um, a project that takes over and can become something else. There is something that I also wanted to add to the to, to the um, to the editorial for it's like exhibition conversation, and I really um, like I would like to to have a space of meeting and sharing, which is what I can do here in this space, and I I mean. I love this because I, it makes me meet new people and discuss new topics that I don't need, maybe know so well. And then it's, uh, I don't know, this is a little bit the story. I'm doing Creative Month alone. Uh, we, have, um, we are also a team. There are a lot of collaborators spread in Europe that are helping with uh, coordination and uh, direction of publication. And then the graphic designers are very important in the team because they're doing like the identity of the of the project. And then and then yeah, and then some of my friends and colleagues from Casamentale are still participating, but not with this business pressure of the, the project needs to work. You know, while for me it's more professional, so I need to also understand how where we go. You know? to situate yeah, to situate it in the in the actual. Um, architectural um, environment today, yeah. yeah. So more like inside. Um, I don't know. Just to comment on that, uh, because looking back at what you did, I mean, it was you started as students, and there was. It feels like you are ashamed sometimes to uh, look back at uh, your early works, but there is, I think, no. not a shame, but <laughs> but like in terms of quality and. There, there is something which is, I mean, we encourage a lot. Um, I mean, it's quite amazing that you kind of um, kept uh, over so long uh, because sometimes like a lot of initiative from students die after a year or two. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of kept going, now it's like your main activity almost. And of course you have to live from that now, but I think still um, to look at, uh, I mean, the first uh, issues you had, you had um, things from friends, from students. Um, it was mostly students. Now, maybe yeah. you had like one person, really a special guest or yeah. something. And I don't know, this is about, uh, I think in the website or like in the discussion we have with Baba and Ellen, it's, um, it's also not just looking at uh, at old books and but also like who is writing today architecture and how do you write what do you write can it be more spontaneous i mean the sanitations like when we ask people it feels always like a big thing to write uh, even for me at the beginning there is something <laughs> but yeah i don't know this is also like a like how do we engage with that on the website and maybe, yeah we are think we have some ideas maybe like even doing residencies or mm -hmm. that it's also it can be like spontaneous but it can be also maybe more deep writing like this this thing of quality as you think about. no but the, maybe quality was not the, the the word it's more like um what we were saying before that my selection of who your uh, your, your platform yeah, would yeah. be different from yeah, each yeah. one no and this is there is a uh, yeah. there is a, uh, a connotation no yeah, of, yeah. of my knowledge yeah. starting from there and and then what i like no yeah. so this is not the value yeah. Um, yeah. that mm -hmm. exists no, no, that's, yeah, that's so, sure. so and i was more thinking because at the beginning when you asked me to do this they said okay but i need to read everything again because i don't know if everything it's not that, that i'm ashamed of the first uh, no, yeah. writings it's just that no maybe they were a little bit naive and i can totally assume but uh, if i would uh, do it i would like to choose the one the best one to give you so i want i wanted to take it as an editorial yeah. challenge again like yeah but i uh, I understand. Yeah. I, I think we are, we are already done. Yeah. It's already eight o'clock. Um, I, I don't know, Ellen, do you want to uh, or Barbara, do you want to add something? I, I mean, I'm finding it so interesting hearing these different points of view. Um, um, I mean, <clears throat> There was something I was thinking about, and I've completely forgotten what it was. But maybe, maybe we can go on. I mean, I, I, I like what you're talking about, this idea of making a space for... Um, I mean, that's really something that's very important in the project, is this sense of making a space for to encourage people to 
um, uh, uh, Stephanie Steen to read, but also to write, um, and also uh, and also to be part to to have that have voices in in the site and to make annotations to make selections, um, and that's I mean that is definitely actually uh, um, one of our biggest challenges is to um, encourage a variety of uh, different people to to participate. Um, and that, yeah, that's what we're trying. That's what we're grappling with now is is how to how to bring different voices in. I mean, now we have to, as, as Emily says, we have existing places. We also have the glossary, which we haven't touched upon at all. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But yeah. the glossary again connects with this uh, this idea of um, quite trying to dismantle structures of knowledge or definitions of what things mean um, and um, bring in different perspectives and interpretations um, <clears throat> so you know in an ideal world we'd have loads of um, glossary terms defined by all sorts of different people we've just had our first one um, Jana Kulek has um, very kindly um, written on utopia for us but that again the, you know the glossary term and so with gender that was an obvious one to to to, um, to make more complex. So we have Paul Preciado, um, a quote from Paul Preciado's text, um, defining gender, the World Health Organization, one that we wrote ourselves. So the, 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 so we have this whole idea that of um, trying to, to classify, but then also break down the, the notion of classification. So we have the themes, the gloss or the glossary terms, but then we try and break them down into different um, definitions. Um, so that that's a place where people can, you know, I, I mean, I think that's actually overtly political. So we've been in trying to encourage people who actually do describe themselves as activists to participate in in that in that term um, in that place. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I think you touched upon that uh, earlier, Emily. This idea of about being a mechanism or being or being an active, being um, an explicitly activist. Um, project and that you know I don't see it as being activist I see it as really as making a space for different things to happen I mean I, 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 I'm wondering in your teaching Stephanie and also in Casa Mentale you know how, do, does this idea of being activist at all is it at all a motivation or is it some you know what's the motivations behind what you're doing um, in your teaching or in your publishing uh, for, for me it's again First of all, to make visible some authors and architects that I know that are not being taught in architecture yeah. schools. Then to invite students to have uh, their own point of view because they are not given the chance to have it. You know, the standpoint theory of uh, the 1980s from feminists and all this subjectivity mm -hmm. is forbidden in schools. Right. We have to write to, to speak from a neutral point of view. Uh -huh. How we teach students in our, in this architecture school at least but i have been teaching in approximately seven or eight architecture schools in canada in france in the states and in lebanon so i have quite an an overview but it, of this uh, creates an incredible tension though doesn't it because there's a traditional way of training to be an architect where your opinion you know, you're kind of providing something for the for the masses, you know. So your opinion, your subjective opinion, is a paramount thing. So kind of the the author architect, but and then on the other hand, I mean, I'm, you're talking about developing a subjective a subjective point of view. But to what end is it to be an uh, you know an architect author, or is it to do something else? I guess that's my question. What's the motive for doing this teaching, for developing the, the, the perspective, the individual yeah, perspective? In a, in a very naive way, I would, and this is what I've been saying before, but I didn't give you the whole title of the class. So I was yeah. saying it's uh, Decentrer la pensée pour un monde plus juste, for, for more social justice. I don't think that architects can change the world. I'm not that naive. <laughs> Think that architects have to know what is happening around them. And yeah, the yeah. things I give them to read are political texts, are texts that are showing them things that are not uh, discussed in school. Because in schools, yes, we discuss today uh, the climate change, but uh, ecofeminism existed since a hundred years. And yeah. no one 
about it. So how to question this? Mm. How come a sub a topic that is today so fashionable has been invisible for a century? Mm. So this is what I want them to, I want them only to be conscious of this. And so this invites them mm. to always look at things yeah. from a critical So it's the larger framing of the, the, the action of your, yeah. I mean, that is, that is, that is so. But, but we can point. discuss this because it's a lot of more, uh, it's many things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I think every student uh, is extracting something from it that is completely different from what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But at least we are having this debate in class because I always come back to if I have to give this class next year, what can I do for to make it better? I always ask them this question and we discuss this. So from the point that I go, I, I always say from the point that they are doing something out of it, only reading it, that's, it's already enough for me. Mm -hmm. Then if, if we can have more and more things, but I mean, I'm, I'm only a person in their formation that is here to open eyes. This but that's, ab that's absolutely the thing. That's, yeah, I mean, you don't, you don't want to know what's going to come out of it because yeah. then what would be the point of doing it and in that, a way? And we cannot know anyway. How can we? Yeah. I think it's very interesting this uh, um, aim of opening eyes, motivated discussion, and uh, um, uh, how do you say, educate the critical uh, discussion or to have a critical discussion. I would say I share this in my work. What we do with the publication is, is that it's like about the transmission of something or of a knowledge that we. Uh, we met in our in our experience, and then and then this to um, to push the debate, to, to talk, no, to at least do that and awaken mm -hmm. the the critical um, capacity, let's say, in the, in the readers and in the in the students, because also Cosmentale started as a student. Uh, project so we were students and actually the first magazine it, it was a uh, revue d'architecture et de résistance we were thinking and we, we we were not receiving what we needed so we were writing very mm, like uh, ourselves super difficult to write at the beginning but we were writing about what we thought we were mis lacking maybe yeah like in a naive way that we and and then we were addressing to our colleagues at first, like because we would write and then ha, huh, I did this, yes, sir. read, 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 and it was like uh, at the beginning in this time. So I really think that this is, uh, I mean, we can do this. Still is the the aim, and uh, yeah, I I I love to hear what you what you just said. I think it's uh, so many today, and th and this is what you do as well in writing, like this. This fact to uh, that you encourage people to annotate and to use the platform is not just an, an analysis of the situation. You, mm. you want to share this, and this mm. sharing is what is what we. Mm. And I just want to say yes. I invite students to read, and and I have been saying it a thousand times now. But then when they have to perform in class, they have to write the text because mm. they have to dialogue. So. Out of the reading, they have to rewrite, even if they do a lot of plagiarism, <laughs> they take sentences and they just put them there. They have to build the context and, uh, and a plot, a, a scenario. So, yeah, they have to process, exactly. they have to pro make a process of the. And this is what is interesting because sometimes they, they don't understand the text. Huh? They find like, ah, oh, this is what you we understand. I didn't understand anything. We don't have the same understanding. But this is also what is interesting. Mm. It's exactly what we are doing also. I mean, I can show you after yes, a quick sure. example. Um, yeah, because yeah, I do have to go. I, I do have yeah. to go soon. Um, but I mean, but <laughs> I'm sure Thank you. Um, it was super inspiring, super to have you. Yeah, well, I'm really just, I'm sorry to not be there um, to really meet you properly, because you know, that would be so special. Hopefully soon that will be possible. Um, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was a really great talk. Ciao. Ciao. Bye. Thank you.